Welcome to another Answers in Jubilees produced by The God Culture. We are nearing the end here of this series, part 50 of this 52-week impactful series, Restoring Torah in the Book of Jubilees. And yeah, we prove it. Uh, No one's going to prove this wrong. Uh, We produce this in addition to the book in order to fully vet this book. Uh, No one else has uh, ever done research like this that we found. Uh, Even R.H. Charles falls far short and seemed to want to operate in a Pharisee paradigm, making some of the dumbest assumptions in his introduction uh, that a Pharisee wrote this book. That's illiterate. Uh, No Pharisee wrote this book. We've proven that well. Um, And he misses so many things that are so obvious. But again, he was a Pharisee, which is pretty obvious in his writings. Those little gnat scoffers who call themselves scholars or bloggers uh, pretending to be, because some do, uh, or whomever who try to dump on this book. Uh, We have pretty much dealt with all of their supposed challenges at this point, uh, which first they must learn how to read. That'd be a good thing to try. I'm just, just saying Um, because they really make themselves fools in this regard. They're representing this book, misrepresenting it really, uh, because they can't even read a passage. They can't even read a paragraph. They can't even read a sentence. And this is one of those cases. Why for this book, though? Why is this so important for them to mix and confuse and stifle in continued censorship? Well, because, as we have seen, it disproves much of the Pharisee, the modern Judaism paradigm, uh, for one. And uh, so you can see why they would do it. It's evil, but you see why. Uh, See, the rabbis filled in these blanks left by the censored book. That was why they censored it. Uh, But see, that only serves to prove just how illiterate and foreign to Scripture they operate. And it's, it's a problem for them. Uh, as people awaken to this. This should not be a surprise, as Messiah warned us of this many times 2,000 years ago. Now that we know Jubilees was mentioned by the name Yashar appropriately in Joshua and Samuel and his Torah, uh, quoted as Torah even by the temple priests and by uh, the Bible, uh, even in Genesis, uh, when Jacob Uh, talks about the story where he received uh, the tribute from the Amorites, which is in Jubilees. That's what he's quoting it from, or what Moses is quoting it from. Jacob's quoting Jacob. He knows his own story, of course. But basically, both stories directly from there, from the book of Jubilees, and certainly not from the fraudulent Pharisee modern Jasher, which is nothing but illiterate leaven, we've well proven at this point. Uh, It's time to discuss the story, though, of the bones of Joseph. This is very oddly and illiterately positioned as a discrepancy in Jubilees, yet we will show you and uh, those scholars uh, that are liars. I mean, they they have to be to take such a position because they don't even uh, show the ability to read the book of Jubilees and saying such and making such a claim, Uh, nor can they read Joshua, nor even Genesis and Hebrews for that matter. It's really bad. Uh, If they can't even represent the modern canon for that matter, they're not Bible scholars, that's for sure. Now, when Joshua died, he commanded his bones be buried in Canaan with his family. But not only do his own words in Jubilees offer an exact match to Scripture on this? They explain Genesis yet again. And now we can understand this, finally. Also, this proves Jubilees from yet another angle, as Torah, used as Torah, and written by Moses, and referenced in Joshua, essentially, yet again. But let's see. Open your book of Jubilees to chapter 46, starting in verse 1. And it came to pass that after Jacob died, the children of Israel multiplied in the land of Egypt, and they became a great nation, and they were of one accord in heart. This was an awesome time for Israel and peaceful. So that brother loved brother, and every man helped his brother, and they increased abundantly and multiplied exceedingly. Ten weeks of years. All the days 
of the life of Joseph. Now, that's all. Got that? It qualifies it as well. Verse 2, And there was no saint in, nor any evil all the days of the life of Joseph, meaning in Egypt, not on earth, um, all of earth, no, just, just in Egypt, just around Joseph and his family, uh, which he lived after his father Jacob. Now, there you go, the qualifier, after Jacob died, from then to the time that Joseph died. For all the Egyptians honored the children of Israel all the days of the life of Joseph, as they should. I mean, they were saved because Joseph interpreted the dream, and he was obviously a good leader and a kind leader, not a conqueror, which is ridiculous, we've covered. Talk about a nuclear bomb, though, to the book of modern Jasher. Let's go ahead and deal with this. It fabricates all kinds of wars in which Joseph fought, including conquest of the entire Middle East and surrounding nations of Egypt. Joseph was no conqueror. And again, that is an outrageous lie from modern Jasher. Joseph's day from Jacob's death to his death were that of peace, period, done, the end. That's a lot of points of Jasher, gone. Modern Jasher is a lie, we've proven. By the way, when it says there was no Satan, we'll cover this next, uh, in the uh, next video. Satan was physically behind Pharaoh's rebellion. He left when he lost. That's what it's essentially saying. Uh, that's all of this says as well. He's roaming the earth, seeking whom he may devour, which is what he does. Uh, still, he doesn't disappear, but he does from the presence of Joseph and his family, and they live in peace, even without Satan's intervention, for the rest of the years of Joseph. Verse 3, and Joseph died being 110 years old, same as in Genesis, 17 years. He lived in the land of Canaan, and 10 years he was a servant. And three years in prison, and 80 years he was under the king, ruling all the land of Egypt. This actually ties to the biblical uh, timeline, because it is the biblical timeline, whereas the modern Jasher fails miserably in that regard. And he died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. So all of his, his brothers had died at the point that Joseph died. And he commanded the children of Israel, before he died, that they should carry his bones with them when they went forth from the land of Egypt. Okay, here's a test. When did the children of Israel go forth from the land of Egypt? In the Exodus, hundreds of years later. What does Joseph command? What he's commanding is not today. In that time, for those who can read, of course, uh, in Exodus, take my bones with you. Now, the reason is obvious. Joseph was number two in the land of Egypt. And no way they would allow such official to be buried in Canaan at that time, which was enemy territory. So that's just fact. He was honored in Egypt and he would be buried there. Anyone attempting to take his bones in those days would not be able to. And he knew so. He'll tell you. However, by the Exodus, Joseph is forgotten by Pharaoh and of no consequence. If his bones were taken then, and he practically spells that out here, it wouldn't matter. This is used to criticize Jubilees by inept scholars who can't even read what Joseph said, nor what Joseph says, and here it is. And he made them swear regarding his bones, for he knew that the Egyptians would not again bring forth and bury him in the land of Canaan. Got that? So Joseph says, the Egyptians, the Egyptians aren't going to let me be buried there now. Do it when you leave Egypt and return to the land. That's what Joseph is saying here. It's pretty obvious. I don't know why many scholars can't seem to read. For Machamaran, king of Canaan, while dwelling in the land of Assyria, fought in the valley with the king of Egypt and slew him there and pursued after the Egyptians to the gates of Erman. So they were enemies. 
So as we said, Canaan was enemy territory to Egypt, and no surprise, the Egyptian leaders would not allow Joseph to be buried there at that time, which Joseph is telling you himself. So is there anything to even talk about on that point? Really not. He was a high-ranking Egyptian official. This is not hard to understand unless one is a scholar steeped in, well, stupid, really. But he was not able to enter for another. A new king had become king of Egypt, and he was stronger than he, so they stopped the Canaanite uh, king, and he returned to the land of Canaan, and the gates of Egypt were closed. So they're still enemies, but they were you know, expelled from the land. They didn't, uh, weren't able to come into Egypt. And none went out and none came into Egypt. So Egypt was shut down uh, regarding the pathway to Canaan at that time. And Joseph died in the 46th Jubilee in the sixth week in the second year. Love how Jubilees does that. And that's what Josephus was talking about, which is what we talked about. It is the record of time. And that's so blatantly obvious. I don't know how... Anybody can misread Josephus on that. And they buried him in the land of Egypt, and his brethren died after him. Okay, so um, basically, Joseph dies, but is buried in Egypt. So they didn't keep Joseph's wish, they say. That's what they say. So Jubilees lied. That's what they're claiming. No illiterate scholar, you can't read. That's the fact. Joseph said Egypt would not allow this burial in Canaan, in enemy territory at his time of his death, but Joseph was originally buried in Egypt. That's what it says. Jubilees is accurate. However, that is not the end of the story, nor does Joseph or Moses write of it. Joshua is the one who records it, and the stupid scholars who can't go a little further into Joshua to see that basically they're fools, not representing the truth nor the word, I don't understand. In fact, we'll show you they fraud Genesis and Joshua on this point in these illiterate blogs steeped in stupid, trying to claim that this point proves that Jubilees is not scripture. That's ridiculous. They can't even read. And the king of Egypt went forth to war with the king of Canaan, Canaan in the 47th Jubilee in the second week in the second year. And the children of Israel brought forth all the bones of the children of Jacob, save, except for, the bones of Joseph. See, Jubilees is lying, right? Not at all. You'll see. And they buried them in the field in the double cave in the mountain, with Abraham, basically. And the most of them returned to Egypt, but a few of them remained in the mountains of Hebron, and Amram, thy father, remained with them. Okay, now, what is the time frame here? Joseph just died, and now the opportunity is open for the sons of Israel to take the bones of all of Joseph's brothers and bury them there. Well, that's great, but... They do not take Joseph's. They also have not had their exodus from Egypt. So, Jubilees is lying, right? Well, talk about an app. No, Joseph said, take my bones in the exodus. Very clearly. He was clear he would be buried in Egypt and stay there in that era because Egypt would not allow a dignitary to be moved into enemy territory. It just makes sense. And Joseph knew it. He tells them so. And these scholars can't even read. But at a later date, when you can, and you return to Canaan, you know, in the Exodus, then take my bones with you, is what Joseph was saying. That's exactly what happens in Scripture. We're going to show you. This means Jubilees is, in fact, Torah, because offering this complete story is what Torah does. Understand, neither Genesis nor Jubilees mention Joseph's bones uh, being buried in Canaan in their times because he wasn't yet. How could this be? Well, let's look at Joshua when this does actually happen. After Moses' death, thus he didn't write about it, Joshua did, which means... Moses wrote Jubilees. Ha! 
In Joshua 24, 32, reading from the KJV, we always use the KJV on Blue Letter Bible basically for these passages. Uh, if ever we don't show the KJV, uh, just know that. Um, we then look at it parallel in Hebrew and Greek most of the time uh, when we're studying, but uh, if there's nothing of note, we don't really go into it. Um, now, we get the rest of the story, which is not complete in Moses' writing because, well, Moses died already when this happened. And that goes for both Genesis and Jubilees. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt. Okay, so they took them out of Egypt. Got that? that that's what the Bible says. Buried they in Shechem in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, four and hundred pieces of silver. And it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. Now, this is pretty clear. I mean, there's really nothing to discuss. Uh, his bones were buried, according to, jo to Joshua, and they're buried in the Promised Land when Israel gets there. That's the timing. That's hundreds of years later after he died. He was originally buried in Egypt, exactly as he said he would be. And now in the Exodus, he was taken and again wandered in the wilderness, his bones uh, in the coffin, we're there for 40 years with everybody else, and then he's taken into the land, and then he's buried, fulfilling his wishes. The illiterate scholars claim because Jubilee says Joseph wanted to be buried in Canaan, and the burial of the brothers happened without Joseph, well, th that means that Jubilee is a liar. They are the liars who can't read. Again, Joseph said the leadership of Egypt would not allow it in his time. His words and jubilees for those of us who can actually read, uh, then bury bones in the Exodus, essentially. Uh, oh, look, here we have the Exodus then. Uh, now we're in Joshua. <laughs> you know, Moses is dead at this point. Joshua is the leader of Israel and finally fulfills Joseph's command. Thus, exactly what Jubilee said would happen, happened 100%. They buried Joseph's bones in the cave with his family, right where he said he wanted to be buried. This is pretty easy to track and pretty stupid of several blogs and attacking Jubilees, and there are many out there, because, well, they can't read, because that's the reality here. This is pretty straightforward. More so, this proves that Joseph's wish, which is in Jubilees, is affirmed by Joshua. And since this burial did not happen in Jubilees, proves the author of Jubilees was before Joshua, and that would be Moses, which is why he didn't write about the burial of Joseph's bones actually happening, because he was already dead when it did. You have to read Joshua to find that out. It's pretty simple. But this isn't just recorded here, and that's the really surprising thing. However, let's not overlook these illiterates. Uh, really, they can't even read Genesis because Genesis does say this. It's not like it's a mystery here at all. Uh, what they're doing is they're applying what is being said here is happening right then and there. And that's not what happens. And Jubilees explains why. And again, Joshua is the record of the burial, so it didn't happen now. So, it, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure that out, but, well, they aren't rocket scientists. They're not even Bible scholars. So, Genesis 50, uh, verses 24 through 26. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham. What's that? That's the Exodus. Is this really that hard? It's the Exodus. Swear to you to, or swear to Abraham and Isaac to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So he's actually prophesying that Israel will return to Canaan someday. And when they do, when that happens, I'm not talking about a trip here. We're talking about for good, because that's what he's saying. He's going to, you're going to be brought out of this land. So they're going to be brought out of Egypt. He knows this. So they'll be 
brought out of Egypt, brought into Canaan, and then you'll bury my bones. And that's exactly what happens. We just read it in Joshua. There it is. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, same as Jubilees, and they embalmed him. And he was put in a coffin in Egypt, same as Jubilees. So, what does Genesis say? Joseph was put into a coffin in Egypt, not in Canaan. Jubilees tells us he was buried in Egypt. It doesn't say that here, but it's obvious that it does happen because he's taken in the Exodus. And then he's buried in Joshua. It's really not difficult. Joshua actually buries the bones of Joseph after Israel enters Canaan hundreds of years later. Thus, these illiterate scholars are calling Genesis and Joshua liars as well because, well, they confirm Jubilees. And usually, almost always, that's the case. Uh, Jubilees fills in this detail. That's what it does. And now you make the full connection, but you can make it with Genesis and Joshua just right there as well as a couple of other verses we'll show you. They assume this means Joseph commanded that he be taken Hundreds of years prior, you know, right at his death. You take me right now. You got to go right now. He doesn't say that. In fact, he says the opposite. Yet Jubilees is clear this will not happen until the Exodus. And that's what he says here, too. Uh, It's really not difficult. And it did happen that way. So the Bible, you know, affirms itself and affirms Jubilees as Torah. And since Joshua, the bones, not Moses, uh, and not Jacob's grandsons with Joseph's brothers, uh, this all ties perfectly, as it should, if they took Joseph's bones hundreds of years earlier, before, in Jubilees, when they buried the brothers, that would be a problem. Because then Joseph would be made out to be a liar. And then Joshua would be made out to be a liar. And then Genesis would be made out to be a liar. And so would Hebrews. I mean, it's just nonsense. So Jubilees uh, and Joshua agree. And in that case, they wouldn't. So basically what they're looking for is a false paradigm uh, that they're wrong and they can't even read what these passages say. These coalesce. Let's go to Exodus 13, 19 in the KJV. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. When? In the Exodus. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you. This is right out of what we just read. And ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. When? During the Exodus. And that's when this happens. So this is the book of Exodus. Hebrews 11.22 also chimes in on this. It says, By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Yes, he did. And his commandment, his wishes were fulfilled completely and accurately. Here we have an admission that Joseph's bones were still in Egypt, as they should be at the time of the Exodus. So they were there. They were not taken to Canaan. He was not buried in Canaan, nor was he supposed to be yet. The time wasn't right. That is when Joseph's bones were then taken to Canaan in the Exodus, wandering the wilderness for 40 years, and then they enter. Moses died Uh, Before they were buried, thus does not record that, but then Joshua does. And that's why you don't see it in Jubilees or Genesis. All is consistent and perfect. Even Hebrews in the New Testament affirms the same story, but again, those scholars who can't read and don't know Scripture haven't bothered to look at Joshua, nor even read what Jubilees says, or even do a simple search on something like Blue Letter Bible uh, for Bones of Joseph. It's pretty simple. It comes right up, folks. <laughs> I, I, this research is not that complex. But they claim this is a discrepancy, when in fact, this proves the book of Jubilees was Torah, written by Moses and some uh, latter author because, uh, not some latter author, because he didn't know the story for the burial. There you go. And uh, doesn't record it because Moses wouldn't, wouldn't be able to. Joshua does. And uh, it, it, you know, in fact, if one was a fraud, 
such as, say, I don't know, the writers of Modern Jasher, they would have this book go into Joshua's days. Uh, and Jasher even goes 17 years after Joshua, even, because it's a complete fraud. So there really is no question that not only is this not a discrepancy for the Book of Jubilees, but these idiots take what serves as evidence, the Jubilees is Torah, written by Moses before Joshua, yet again, another proof, and they try to turn that into a challenge. I mean, how stupid can you be? This proves Jubilees is consistent and continues to complete Torah, quoted by Joshua again, really. Uh, of course, the modern Jasher is again proven an illiterate fraud. We are not done with this series, though. We have two more to go. The next one we will deal with, who is Prince Mastama? right? There is actually a channel out there that oddly just claimed that Gog of Magog is Mastema. And let's be clear, that is outright wrong, and we're going to prove that too. Uh, we will prove him out next and identify the angel of death in Egypt. This is good. Uh, then in the final video in this series, and we maybe will add to it more uh, over time, but at this point, we are not intending to necessarily. We will cover the prophecy in Jubilees, and this is incredible. Moses knew far more than we are told. We hope everyone learned something, at least something, from this video. Uh, we know there are agitators in this audience who don't actually watch to understand uh, at all, but uh, only to attempt to agitate. One even admitted that he doesn't actually watch the videos. Well, then he doesn't actually see any of the words on the screen, and he doesn't know what he's talking about anyway. But it doesn't matter. These are illiterate idiots, really. Uh, you will see their comments, and you will see us catch them most of the time, and then you will see them disappear as they will be muted here. But they'll create another username, and another one, and another one, and another one, and then you'll see a first-time comment from a person that says, I love all your videos, but... <laughs> Wait a minute. You've never commented before, so you don't love our videos. I... I Stupid. Anyway, we are not going to treat them as if they actually care about the truth when they have proven themselves liars many times. They're paid to agitate. But anyway, it's our channel, our rules, and we will abide by them. We have over 380 videos on this channel now. Um, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos. And now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often and we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up. We now have alternative platforms to YouTube for videos on Rumble, Utreon, and we just announced another new platform called Odyssey. Our new podcast is also available for all of our videos as well, mostly. Uh, all links in the description box. Uh, and friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space original. If you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor link below. We now have five books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries, with our new release now available, Rest, the 400-plus page case for Sabbath, and how substantial it is. Anyone who has not studied this case, you need to know this. Any New Testament believer who is not keeping the Sabbath is called by the New Testament an unbeliever. There's a little teaser for you. Now, read the book and find out why. We're not going to tell you in a comment, so don't try. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon, and it is available in hardcover or softcover there. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interiors. So uh, many, of course, had requested that overseas, and in the Philippines we already have it in color, so not an issue here. 
but that too is available in hardcover or softcover on Amazon if you wish. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, are now free in ebook. Our content is free, folks. Just go to ophirinstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone. The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, named by the temple priests in Qumran as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilees also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full test for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes, in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288-page quality paperback has a high-resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. 
read it and test it for yourself. And you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.